So the transfer window is upon us and it's all been going mental. Squawker Dave, Howson and Jonas, who is a journalist in the world of sport. Let's talk about the transfer window. Howson, so far so good? Uh, absolutely delighted with what we've done. The buys that we've done are really astute. We've gone and replaced the missing experience and quality that we've lost over the last couple of windows. We've replaced um, players that we've not really replaced since Roy Keane went. In, uh, in bringing in Schweinsteiger and having a real hearty midfield. We've gone for a real good up-and-coming player in Damian. We've got a bit of excitement in Depay and we've got a real potential long-term replacement for Carrick in Schneidlin. I'm really happy what we've done and I don't think we've finished yet. Oh, Squawker Dave, do you agree with that? Yeah, it's been really good so far. I think midfield, obviously, we've been lacking the players in the windows. We missed out on a lot of top talent, but I think Schneidlin, obviously, I think he's going to be the breakout player. Schweinsteig obviously brings such, such quality. Depay is fantastic. What a brilliant young player. And then Damian from Torino, obviously, a, a bit of a buy out the hat, but could, be, could turn into a really, really solid fullback. So, yeah, I'm, I'm happy about it, but I think we still do need a centre half at least, and then probably a striker as well to you know, complement Wayne Rooney. OK. Jonas, where do you stand on all this? No, I think Man United have done some terrific business. Um, they started off in trying to buy the players in the positions that they've needed. Uh, I think Damian is going to be a great signing for them as well. I think uh, he's very flexible. He can play all across the defensive line, which I think Man United need. Um, Depay, is, he, he has some real potential. I, I think um, I'm not going to you know hype him up or anything, but he, he looks to be a potential world-class player. And... Schweinsteiger is Schweinsteiger. I mean, he, he still is terrific. For those who saw the World Cup final, I mean, he is a big game player. And if, it, if there's anything Man United really need, I think it's, it's, it's a big game player who can grab uh, the ties against Liverpool, against uh, Man City, against Chelsea by the scruff of the neck and, and sort of dominate. And I mean, Morgan Schneiderlin has always been a bit of a player who's gone under the radar from, from the big teams. So I, I think that United have picked up some very, very good players. And uh, I still think they might need to sign a centre back. Maybe even a goalkeeper if if De Gea leaves. And uh, rumor now is that Valdez might be out as well. So we have to see what happens. But but I think for now they've done very very good in transfer window. Okay. Obviously we can't predict the future when it comes to goalkeepers and strikers. But I am now going to ask you to predict the future. Uh, so we've asked you all to come up with what you think will be the starting eleven. And then if you want to give us a bench, a bench just for funsies uh, for when we play Spurs on the opening day of the season. Housen. Talk us through it. Can I just say that I am a massive fan of not doing starting 11s? Um, <laughs> I don't like doing these because you don't know the strengths, you don't know the weaknesses of the team that you're going up against. It's complete guesswork. We're making massive assumptions on the fitness, the rotation and blend of the players that we've got. So I'm just going to say I am doing this under duress. OK, <laughs> so here's my nice. potential starting 11 for the Spurs game. Should we have no injuries and should everyone be completely match fit? I'm going to go for Valdez in net because I think by the time the Spurs game happens, we'll have said our goodbyes to that Spanish bloke, the other Spanish bloke. Um, <laughs> Damian is going to be my right back. Luke Shaw will be my left back. Chris Marlin will be my centre back alongside another new signing, which will be Otamendi. And I think he's going to be massive for us. Sitting in front of those in a bit of an anchorman role, I've got Schweinsteiger. I'm sticking Carrick on a bench for this because I'm going to want to see how the new signings all blend because I think Carrick, as much as I love him, I think he is on the downslope of his career. Um, injuries are catching up with him. I don't think he's going to be 30, 40 games a season from now on. So I'm going in with Schweinsteiger just in front of him to box-to-box-ish uh, players in Herrera and Schneidlin. Real energy, real quality, real ability. Just ahead of Schweinsteiger, I'm expecting to mop up and provide steel. Ahead of them, I'm going for Depay on the left and I'm going for Mata on the right. Not really balanced. It's a bit asymmetric with the way they'll play, but Rooney as my centre forward. And I would expect all three of those to probably rotate through and occupy different positions the way they yeah. play. Um, on the bench, probably Lindegaard as the keeper. And then Rojo, Blind, Young, Fellaini, Wilson, uh, etc. Carrick, probably. Because okay, obviously there's seven on the bench this season. Um, now, Squawker Dave, do you see similar things happening against Spurs? I'd say so, yeah. I think we were definitely going to sit with a 4-3-3 shape. I would like to tilt the diamond, tilt the, the three, sorry. I'd rather have two sitting and then one in front, but similar the 4-3-3 shape. Big call here. I reckon we're going to have David De Gea in goal. 
I really, I can't see him moving now. Obviously, Ed Woodward's got a bit of beef with Real Madrid, but I just can't see him. He's on the tour. He's there now. You know, we'll keep him for next season. We'll either sign him up for a new deal or he'll go for free. That's fair enough for me. That really is. Anyway, Damian right back, you know, a really top, top player. From watching him a bit from last season, he's very, very good positionally. He's a massive upgrade on Valencia. He gets quite, he sticks to his man. He gets very tight to his opponent, doesn't let him turn, doesn't let him come inside. Massive upgrade there. I think we're not going to do much movement, to be honest, with the centre half. I've, I've got a feeling that it was going to be Small and Jones that's going to start start the Premier League. And then Daly Blind at left back, obviously, a brilliant, brilliant performance against Spurs last season. He was absolutely excellent in that game, linking with Ashley Young brilliantly. Then my two holding midfielders, I'm going to go for Schwein. Steiger and Schneidlin. Obviously, Michael Carrick was such a key cog last season, but I think our midfield is moving on. And I think that's where these two players come in, with obviously Schweinsteiger's brilliant ability to, to find your forward players. He completed more forward passes than any Man United midfielder last season, even though he only played 20 games. Crazy stats right there. And Schneidlin, I want him to be the box-to-box -box type of player that he played last season for Southampton. And then I want Ander Herrera to be a bit more advanced. Obviously, he showed his goal score and prowess last season from central midfield, and I think we can continue with that. Going to go for exactly the same from free as, uh, as Housen, you know, with Matter on the right, Rooney through the middle and Depay on the left. Depay is going to be fantastic. Last season in there, Divizzi, he have averaged about three goals every four games, can score free kicks, can hit it from outside the box. It's going to be crazy. On to a bench, just going to go with Lindegaard. Then I reckon we'll have Carrick, Shaw, Di Maria, Yanazai, Fellaini and Wilson. Okay, right. Uh, now, Jonas, if you give us your team, We'll then discuss things like Ottomendi, the fact that Housen didn't pick Di Maria at all, who the goalkeeper will be. So, before we get there, go on, Jonas. I don't have a bench, but um, my team is a bit of a mixture here from uh, Housen and Squawker Dave here. But I, I, uh, I have De Gea in goal. I, I, I agree with, with uh, Squawker Dave that seeing as he's gone on tour and a deal has not been done there yet, uh, I, I think he'll stay. I think he'll leave for free next summer, but... More on that later on. Uh, I think Shaw will play at left back. I think uh, Darmian will play at right back for the same reasons as mentioned. I think Smalling will play uh, alongside Nicolas Otamendi. Uh, I think Michael Carrick will start uh, because I think that when you have a team with so many new signings, you need uh, some of the old, I suppose, the old bastions of the team as well to sort of give the experience. Uh, and I don't believe in, in throwing every single new signing on at the same time because it usually doesn't end up being very good. Liverpool and Tottenham are good examples of that from past seasons. Uh, I think Schweinsteiger will start just because he is fantastic and, and I think he can do a bit of everything. And I, and I agree as well with Andrea playing uh, because he gives a bit of everything as well. Uh, and he could also be more of the offensive of the two of Schweinsteiger and him, uh, whereas Schweinsteiger will probably be the, be the one to bust the midfield. Um, and I also agree with, with the three, with, with Mata playing on the right uh, and Depay on the left and Rooney up front. And I, I don't, if I'm going to pick a quick bench, the only, the only player I don't think will be there is Di Maria. OK, so Housen, you didn't pick Di Maria. Uh, where do you think he'll be? I think he'll be in Paris. Do you? I do. And for that reason, I didn't select him. I mean, I understand. <laughs> I totally understand. Uh, do, would you want him to go to Paris? Um, I don't think we would allow him to go unless he was not in Louis van Gaal's plans. So yeah. the fact that there's potential that he may go, and if he does end up going, I don't think it will be uh, against the club's wishes. I don't think they would have to prize him out of our hands. If he goes, I think it's with our blessing almost. So yeah. uh, I think that's a deal that's likely to happen. Uh, and yeah, I would like to have seen him carry on, but he's obviously not happy in Manchester despite what he said. And if Louis van Gaal's prepared to let him go, then I'm prepared to let him go. OK. Uh, Squawk Dave, do you want to weigh in? Got any facts about Di Maria? I just think it's an absolute shame. If we let Di Maria go after one season, it'll be, you know, be crazy. It was absolutely brilliant in the Copa America. Fantastic, obviously led sort of Argentina to the final with Lionel Messi. Both of them were absolutely brilliant in terms of creativity. Last season in the Premier League, Di Maria was directly involved in a shot every 15 minutes in the Premier League. That's the best record of any player to play over 10 minutes, ever, over, make over 10 appearances, sorry. And he's that player that's explosive in the final third. And I think we will, if we lose him, we'll lack, lack variation. And what we need this season is a big squad. Obviously, we need, these, we need a number of different attackers. Juan Mata is a sort of a creative goal-scoring attacker. Depay is going to be running on the last man, explosive. Di Maria is going to be coming from deep taking people on. And then we've got maybe Pereira and Yanazai in that. The variation needs to be there. I think losing a player of Di Maria's quality is a bad move for Man United. OK, so now, guys, goalkeeper situation. What's going on? Housen, both of the guys thought that he's going to be there. Do you think he's going to be there? I don't think he's going to be there, no. I think uh, us going on the tour and 
Ramos being made Real Madrid captain. He's just posturing from both of the club presidents. Mm-hmm. I don't think we'll end up getting Ramos. Uh, and I think, ultimately, M- Madrid will probably pay up what we're asking for for the game. OK. Uh, now, before we move on, let's talk about the players that you didn't select. I mean, nobody even seemed to think about Fellaini. Do we think there's room for the players who perhaps have lost their positions or where a lot of players have come in to stay at the club or do they need to move on? Anyone? Oh, I reckon opinion. Marouan Fellaini is a good option from the bench. I've said it, you know, he's good to change up the tactical style, but he's definitely not a starter. You know, the quality we do have in central midfield, now he's probably about, eight, you know, seventh or eighth choice, I'd say. But he could come on as be that target man, but I prefer to have more of a, you know, a proper striker. Jonas, do you think there are players that need to move on? Um... I'm not quite sure who they should move on right now. I think they still need to sign a few players and then look at, at who they got after that. Um, if Otamendi is to come in, I, I don't see any, any space for Johnny Evans, for example. Um, but for now, I think that the squad, I, I agree with what the guys are saying, that when you're playing the Champions League and you're going to try and, and, and challenge on all fronts, you need a huge squad. And the numbers right now are perfect for Man United. But I still think that... Um, the ones that they acquire are going to, to determine who are, who are the ones to leave. And there will be several players leaving on loan as well, I'd imagine. OK. Uh, Halson, who do you want to see gone? I mean, there's some talks around Raphael, Evans, Hernandez, Valencia. I think it, it's quite clear that Levan Gaal didn't like Raphael. Um, he's shown that by playing what's essentially a right winger ahead of him for most of the season and signing a right back this summer. If he's not reading the signals, then someone needs to sit him down, I think. Um, yeah. So uh, there's also talk of a bid coming for him as well. So I, I think Raphael's likely to go. Johnny Evans, with all the talk of an experienced centre half coming in, Johnny Evans is not a young centre half. He's not really lived up to his own potential. Um, it might just be a confidence thing. He could go on to a new club and do perfectly fine. But I think it's probably time to move him on from Manchester United. We are looking at elite levels in the Champions League and looking at retaining the, the title, oh, winning the title. Sorry, winning our title back in the Premier League. And I think to do that, we need to be looking at players that are better than Johnny Evans. And I think we probably do require a striker, which is going to likely mean that Hernandez is going to be moved on. We do look a little bit short in that area. I don't think James Wilson is ready to step up should Rooney get an injury for any long period of time. I think he's going to be fine coming in for a game here and there, a substitute appearance here and there. I think he's going to be great as an impact player. And we're going to have Wayne Rooney in there who is going to play whenever he is fit. So... Why would you bring in another forward? We're probably going to be going with a 4-3-3 or at most a 4-2-3-1 sort of formation. So there's only one spot up front. And for me, that will be Wayne Rooney, unless he's moved on, which we all know is unlikely. OK, same question to all of you, but Squawker Day, start us off. What are your hopes for the rest of the window? And what do you make of man of the moment, Ed Woodward? Well, I'd, like I said before, two, maybe one centre-half. I'd probably like two centre-halves. I'm still... Not convinced with Chris Smalling, Jones, Rojo, you know, Evans, we mentioned before. They're all a little bit dodgy. They all have a little bit of moments of madness. And I think Smalling's the one that's improved the most, but he's still got massive weaknesses. When he defends on the touchline, when he's pulled out wide, he's exposed so badly. I think that if we could get a combination of Hummels and Otamendi, obviously not going to happen. That would be absolutely fantastic. But I want to go on to Ed Woodward. I think he's people are making out and being an absolute genius in this window. I'd argue that he's absolutely not. You look at the signings that he missed. Um, in previous windows, you look at the likes of Fabregas that he missed, Thiago. He missed Ander Herrera in 2013. He missed that signing. Ander Herrera didn't get the paperwork done to come through to Man United. Danny Alves, you know, messing about with Sergio Ramos. He signed Falcao. He signed An- Angel Di Maria for 60 million quid. He signed Juan Mata for 37 million quid. Marouane Fellaini for 27 million quid. I just think he's, people are hyping him up a little bit because he's made a few good signings. But you look at his life, life cycle and it's just not good enough. Go on, Jonas. Well, I think Man United still need to sign uh, at least one centre-back, and I think that will be Otamendi. Uh, I disagree a little bit, and I think that United should sign a world-class striker as well. Um, I still think that, that Rooney at times gets away with, with not performing, and he needs someone to challenge him a little bit. And Robin Van Persie did it. Uh, Falcao did it, even though he didn't really succeed in doing so. But I still think he needs someone to sort of you know, push him in the back a little bit and make him perform. I don't think I'm going to bring Halson in now because I can't even remember what the question was. Uh, it was something to do with signings and how much of a god is Ed Woodward. I think what we've got with Ed Woodward is towards the end of the Fergie era, I think Fergie was um, covering up for the Glazers' lack of investment massively. And Gil and Fergie, between the two of them, just didn't want to spend money on players. If you look at our window in 2009, we sold Ronaldo and bought in Obertan, 
Valencia, Michael Owen. Big name. What's wrong window? What? Um, and I think what's changed since then is that we are now prepared to pay agents. We are now prepared to pay George Mendes what he wants because you have to deal with these super agents if you want the top level of player. And I think that's all that's changed is our outlook in terms of how we deal with these big money signings. And that's why we're getting players at the higher level. We've also got a direct need at the club that we really need post-Fergie some big players to come in because Fergie carried that team higher than their talent did. Um, and I think Ed Woodward is just doing his job. He is the CEO, chairman, whatever you want to call him, of Manchester United. It should be pretty easy to sell this club to anybody. We can pay better wages than 99% of the clubs that's out there. Players earn more for playing for Manchester United than they do for clubs of a similar sort of size around the world. This is Manchester United. We should be signing players like this, and we should have been signing players like this since the mid-90s. We just haven't under Gill, under Martin Edwards, under the Glazers, and all Ed Woodward is doing is living up to the expectation that a club of this size should have. Fair enough, that's a good point. All right, we'll leave it there. I will ask you one more question, though, based on the fact that we've signed all these players uh, and there is less talent emerging from the youth sub. Do you think, just a yes or no answer, this is the year that that record ends about having a uh, homegrown talent in the match day squad, Houghton. Can I elaborate on it a little bit? You can elaborate a little bit. Right. Yes, it probably will be the time that it ends because essentially we've got what? Yanazai? Yanazai and Wilson. Real Blackett. own first Nair. talent. Um, so it probably will come to an end, but I disagree with you that the youth system is poor and failing. No, I didn't say it was failing. It meant we've, because we've bought loads of people. Well, that doesn't make it sound like it's thriving. Uh, go on, Dave. Um, I reckon we will keep the record. I reckon little Paddy McNair, Yanazai between them, Wilson, uh, you know, a few of the lads, they'll be all right. We'll keep the record going. OK, go on, Jonas. Just a yes or no. Uh, I think it will stay. I think they'll manage yeah. to keep it alive. Perfect, that'll do. Right, guys, thank you very much. Everybody else, get in the comments below. Who do you think will be in the starting lineup to play Spurs? That's basically the question. See you later. Thank <laughs> you.